Okay, so in this video, I'm going to go through uh, simplifying algebraic expressions, um, whether we're adding, collecting like terms, or we're just multiplying them through. Now, whenever you're adding or subtracting like terms, uh, when, when you're adding, subtracting algebraic expressions, you can only add the like terms. Now, let's have a look just at, over here at uh, what exactly is are our like terms, so that way we can go ahead and... Um, it's going to be hard to um, add and simplify algebraic expressions if you don't know what terms are like. Now, what terms are like when we, in terms of variables, um, it has to be, variables have to have the same power. So, for example, if we have a, a and a squared, they're not like terms. These are not like terms because we can't then go ahead and do they equal the same thing? No, they don't. They're not like terms. We can't just go ahead and add them. The same goes with um, if we have two, um, two variables multiplied by each other. AB is, uh, and if we had 4AB, well, these are like terms because we have the same, these have the same uh, variables. So the variables are the same. They're like terms. So what we can only we can only add and subtract things that are like terms. So let's go ahead. These two are like terms. These two, ty and ty, they're like terms. So we can just add and subtract just how we normally would. It's the same if, if we've got, you know, if we've got five, let's just say that this is how many apples we've got. Five apples plus two apples. Then we've got minus three bananas plus four bananas. Well, we can only add and subtract the apples and bananas here over. So we can then collect this, these apples. We've got seven apples. And then we've got one banana or just B. So that's how I want you to consider this simplification of, uh, of this algebraic expression. So um, if we have minus j minus 9j, well, we've got that is equal to minus 10j. They're like terms, so we can add or subtract them. Over here, what's like? Well, over here we have a constant, and over here we have two like terms. We have the ab's, okay? So the same, uh, we have two variables multiplied by each other, and the same variable, so we can collect those together. So we've got, um, therefore, we've got 24AB, take away 5 is going to be 19AB, 19AB. And then we've got the 7 at the end. That doesn't go anywhere. We can't collect that with another term unless we have another number, okay, or a constant. Let's see what we can do in uh, part E. 6A, let's collect our like terms. So we've got two like terms there, the A's. And these are like terms, which are the B's. Okay, so this is a like term and this is a like term. So in order to collect like terms, let's let's start with our positive values first. We've got 12B plus another 11, which means we've got 23B. And then we've got 6A's and we're taking 7 away. So 6, take away 6 is going to be 0. Take away 1 more is going to give us negative a. Over here, we can't actually simplify that at all because we can't collect any like terms. So no, simpli uh, no simplifying is required. Okay, so this one, we can simplify a through to f, but we certainly can't simplify this because there's no like terms to collect. Over here, we can collect uh, ghi because there's two... Um, there's two sets here. This one has GHI, or the three variables, multiplied by each other. This has the same. So we can just collect them as normal, and that's 3 GHI. Okay, so I'm going to do question 8 now. Okay, so for question 8, we've got simplify. Now, when we're multiplying we don't have to collect like terms or anything like that. We just simply multiply them through. So I'm going to do 8a. Now, whenever you have um, 
these terms, you need to multiply the numbers by the numbers, okay? So 15 times 2 is going to be equal to 30. And what do we have left? Well, we've multiplied our number through. So now what we've got is A times a B. And how would we write A times B? We don't write it like A times B. That is the same as AB. So let's just, so we've done our A times B. We've done our 15 times 2. We've broken that down. Let's bring them together. So let's bring them together. That's going to be 30AB. And we're done. Let's have a look at this one. Let's multiply the number first. 6 times 11 is 66. We've got an AB, which is the same as, let's have a look what AB is the same as. A times B is the same as AB, isn't it? And that AB is then multiplied by C. So AB times C is the same as ABC. Now let's bring them together. 66 ABC. We can't do anything else to that. And finally for C, let's have a look and, and deal with our negative numbers first. Remember we were talking about before, we've got negative times a negative. If we're looking at a, a number line, this is the negative direction here. If we're going the opposite to the negative direction, we're going in the positive direction. So a negative times a negative turns out to be a positive. So let's let's go ahead and change this. Negative 2a times negative 7 is the same as 2a times 7 times a b. Okay, so we've just got rid of this expression and changed that to 14a. Then times a b gives us 14ab. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, do question 9. Question 9, we're looking at simplifying. We've got 24a divided by 20. So I guess this is 20a. Now, whenever we have... Uh, something multiplied on the numerator, and we see the same thing on the denominator, then we can just go ahead and cancel those out. Because what is A divided by A, anything divided by itself is 1. So really, this just cancels out to 1 over 1. And effectively, that just, that just really just cancels out, because we don't really need to write that, do we? So we've got 24 over 20. Now it's a matter of simplifying the fraction that's left over. Okay, so simplifying 24 over 20. In order to do that, you might need to remember that you need to find the highest common factor. Highest common factor, what's a number that goes into 20 and 24, and it's the highest number, or the highest number that goes evenly? Well, that would be number, that would be the number 4. Let's divide 24 by 4, and we, we have to do the same to the bottom, don't we? So therefore, we've got 6 over 5. We've got a prime number as a denominator. We clearly can't do anything more to simplify that any further. So there's our that, uh, 24a divided by 20a is equal to 6 over 5. Let's have a look at um, part b. 25ab. 25ab. Now, when we're multiplying algebraic expressions and dividing them, we always look at the constant, this number, we can just treat it as an ordinary number. Okay, so that's over 5a, by the way. So 25 divided by 5, we know to be equal to 5. And then the next thing is, what are we going to do with the a's? Well, as we mentioned before, a divided by an a as long as there's nothing else, if it's a squared divided by an a, we can't really, we can't just cancel them out because they're not the same thing. But anything divided by itself is 1, so they're just, those are just going to cancel out. And what we have left over is b. Okay, it's now simplified. And finally, this one over here, um, we've got minus 4ab divided by minus 44a. Well, the same rules... That, um, that we looked at before. A negative times a negative is a positive. Well, a negative divided by a negative is a positive. 
So the first thing we do is this negative 4AB divided by negative 44A, that's actually going to cancel out to be, um, to be basically positive 4AB divided by positive 44A. Now the A's as before, they're going to cancel out. And we're left with 4B over 44. But we're not done yet, are we? Because is there a number that goes into 4 and 44? Yes, there is. It's 4. Let's divide by 4. And we'll divide the bottom by 4. So what we're left with is uh, 4 divided by 4 is just 1. So we've got B over 11. And that is now simplified. Okay, so I'm going to stop there. I'm going to continue on with um, question 10 in the next video.